Alright folks, we're looking at our next part of the fight in gospel ministry and I'm just going to pray, it's good to see you. Dear God, we just pray that you would fill us with your fullness today. We pray for the Holy Spirit's presence. Lord, I just pray that this ministry would be for your glory and I just pray that you bless us now, Father, in Jesus' name. Bless the people who hear these words. May they be comforted and encouraged in your name. Amen. So we finish with Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. There's a couple of other texts for this section that I want to finish with. And then we're going to go on to our new section. This section has been Be Strong in the Lord. And we're just finishing this off with two or three verses. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter... Well, I, 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 I have not written it properly, so I can't go. 2 Timothy chapter 4, 17. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17. It says, But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also I was delivered out of the mouth of the liar. Wow. Paul was virtually on his own and God stood with him. And God will stand with you as a pastor, as a preacher. You know, if God's called you, he will stand with you, okay? So don't feel that God's not going to be with you. He is with you in your ministry. If God has called you to a ministry, he will stand by you, okay? He will. And then Joshua chapter 1, verse 9 and 11. Joshua, Joshua, sorry, Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 to 11. It says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and of courage, and of good courage? Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp, and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourself, for within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go to the possession, possess the land which the Lord your God has given you to possess. The people of God were commanded to be strong and courageous. Now, I just thought of something, that God doesn't want you to be fearful. He doesn't want you to be distrustful. If he's called you, he sent you, he has a job to do and he's going to provide for you. Okay. So it's sinful for us to be worried all the time whether God is going to back us up or not. He will back you up. Now he commands you to be strong and move on. The next section of our study is uh, Know Your Enemy in the Gospel. And we're looking at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. God is good. Ephesians 6, 11. He says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Notice that. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Ooh. Isn't that amazing? Uh, Ulysses Grant says this, The art of war is simple enough. Find out where your enemy is. Get at him as soon as you can. Strike him as hard as you can. And keep moving. Ooh. What is our enemy? Our enemy isn't Islam. Our enemy isn't the atheist. Our enemy isn't the cults. Our enemy is Satan and 
the demonic forces in high and, and wicked places. Okay? If you don't believe me, verse 10, finally be strong and the Lord in the power of his might put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of Islam, against the wiles of atheism, no, against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against what, Islam? What, atheism? No. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Our enemy is the demonic forces and the devil. Behind atheist, behind Islam, is the devil and his evil, his evil doers. Okay? Behind all the political systems that are against the gospel is the devil. Behind the people who mock you, the people who attack you, is the devil. He is the one that we're fighting. Okay? He is our real enemy. So if we neglect the spiritual battle, then we're going to lose. Okay? I've made a mistake. I, I um, had a political issue with this modern atheism, militant atheism is extremely growing stronger and it's having political influence and I made the mistake of fighting the, the atheist on a political level that was in the flesh but we're not fighting atheists, we're fighting the demonic forces and atheists need Jesus by the way we're fighting demonic forces, we're fighting satanic forces and we've got to fight with spiritual weapons not carnal weapons well, I can't, I've made mistakes in that area. We fight in the spiritual weapons, the resources that God has given us. But we've got to know our enemy. We can't underestimate our enemy. You know, in the Vietnam War, in my notes here, um, the Americans underestimated the Vietnamese. They thought, the Americans thought they'd go in and have a traditional war where one army meets another army and boom they find out who, who's the winner but when the Americans entered Vietnam the Vietnamese soldiers they just dug trenches and holes and hid in holes in mountains and they hid away and then they popped up every now and again in the jungle killed a few Americans and then ran away and hid the Americans were underestimated that they didn't realize that that was the enemy and as a consequence they had to retreat a lot of us today and I, I've made mistakes. We underestimate who we're fighting. We are fighting the devil and his demonic forces. We fight a powerful foe. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. Isn't God's word amazing? 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 Whose minds the God of this age is blinded who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God should shine on them Satan is blinding people's minds So when an atheist or a, a Muslim or someone or a cult person from Mormons or Jehovah's Witness challenges us and says you don't preach the truth and they're quite strong with us and we get upset and we say well actually we disagree with you or whatever we need to remember that it's not there it's not them who are opposing us it, it's Satan behind them he's the one manipulating them and he's blinded them 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 Verse 18. Is it? 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. I've got the wrong verse, sorry. Oh, have I? No, I haven't. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18. Therefore, we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again, but Satan hindered us. 1, 1 Timothy 3 7 
Now, I'm not into all this demonology stuff today that goes on, you know, where people go over the top about demons. So I'm not doing that. I'm just all I'm doing is just show, making you aware of what the scripture teaches. One Timothy three seven. Moreover, we must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest we fall in reproach and the snare of the devil. So the devil is ready to entrap us and snare us. I think 1 John 5.19 1 John 5.19 We know that our God and the whole world we know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And then uh, 1 Peter 5.8 and 9 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 and 9 Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour Resist him steadfast in the faith knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world And uh, we'll come back to to um, to one text in particular that I want to look at in a minute but the, the thing is this is that as a pastor you might get someone in your congregation that doesn't like the work that you're doing and you, you're tempted sometimes to lose your temper with that person but you've got to remember that it's not the person who's opposing you it's the devil so that means you can treat that person <laughs> with grace and kindness okay and realize that you need to be praying that God would open their eyes that God would would push back the satanic forces that are, are opposing you okay <laughs> the next thing you need to realize is that you know Satan's going to do everything he can to stop you from preaching the gospel so he's going to attack you everywhere he can whether it be in your home whether it be in your church whether it be outside, whenever you're preaching, whatever. So if that's the kind of fight that you're involved in, <coughs> you've got to be in prayer constantly. There's got to be times where you're praying every day, you have seasons of prayer, and you're praying for victory, and you're praying against these forces, and your you, uh, evil forces. <coughs> you're praying for God's help to help you in this fight. So prayer is the key in this battle against Satan. And we're not to fear Satan. Yeah, Satan is a mighty foe, and his evil forces are a mighty foe. <coughs> but they were defeated at the cross. <coughs> the Lord defeated them. He was, he, when he was crucified, he defeated the satanic forces. So it's at the cross that we can defeat Satan. It's at the cross we need to come and plead the blood of Jesus Christ. There's a story when uh, Luther felt really guilty. He, he, he said that Satan came to him and rolled down a scroll and showed all his sins and smiled at him and said you can't preach the gospel and Satan smiled back and said I can because of the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me from all sin and you've got to silence the attacks of the devil and silence the attacks of any evil forces coming against you with the blood of Christ and come under the blood of Christ and defeat Satan under the blood of Christ but that's where the fight is really it's at the cross it's getting the spiritual resources that Christ has got you, uh, as, as one for you at the cross and using those spiritual resources to fight the devil okay and that's the real battle so it's good to learn about atheism I learn about atheism all the time it's good to learn about Islam it's good to learn about the Mormons it's really really good to learn about heresies but your main duty and responsibility is to get on your knees and be in prayer that's where the battle is won and lost in prayer so spend time in prayer and praying for God to give you victory in these days thank you